Hi everyone, my name is Joanne Denning and I'll be the instructor for your summer uh, digital media graphic design course. Uh, and I just wanted to take a few minutes to kind of show you the interface so that you were familiar with it and comfortable using it. Basically the course is going to be bro broken down into six weeks and if you go into this little side, notice on the side of the interface when you log in, you'll see there's a weekly instructions tab here. If you click on that, you'll be able to see all of the weeks broken down by date. Um, it's about six weeks, but I break each week into two parts. We're trying to get through all of the curriculum I usually cover in a 18 week course. So it's a little bit of a challenge, but uh, the past two summers that I've taught this course online have been very successful. So I have confidence that uh, we can get through this and, and do some great design projects. So if you ever get confused, you can come here and kind of see the date and get kind of caught up or familiar with what's going to happen next. If you skip too far ahead, there might be slight changes made as I come up to that particular segment, but it'll generally stay the same. I'll also have a news section, so I'll be posting everything in the news. So on um, 631, uh, I'll post what's due until 6-3, so that's today. 6-31 is the course start date, and I'm going to be posting everything that's going to be due up until 6-3 in a few hours. Uh, there's also tabs at the top here. So if you notice, there's a communication section and an assessment section. So if you go into communications, you'll see that there's two really important things you need to become familiar with. The first is discussions. Discussions is where you are going to upload work for peer review. You won't be doing this with every project or every assignment, but uh, on many of the assignments, you'll upload a version of it that's still kind of in a rough working state, and you'll get feedback from other people in the class. And it's really important that you upload here and that you give students feedback and that you receive students feedback because this is, it, this is actually a percentage of your grade. So if you fail to do this, you'll notice um, once you get your final grade, there'll be a deduction for not participating in the discussion forums. And I'll, I'll usually state which specific discussion forum you didn't participate in. So just make sure that you're, you're posting work here and that you're giving people feedback. And it's actually really fun because you get to see other students work, they get to see your work, you get some feedback. So it's a great way for us to communicate throughout the summer session. The other thing that's here is the email. Email is where you can communicate with me. Um, you can communicate with other students if you want. Uh, and it's, it's actually the best place for you to ask me a question. I'm going to be checking the course email frequently, much more frequently than I check my uh, DVC email. So this is probably the fastest way to get a hold of me if you, if you have some issue. Um, so if you do need to contact me through my D DVC email, that's fine. I'll probably respond to you pretty quickly as well. But this is actually a better place because I'll know what section you're in and I'll know where you're coming from and it'll just make a little bit more sense to me. So come up and become familiar with that. These are the two main tabs you'll be using. And then if you look over here, there's a, also a assessment tab. So if I click on that, I'll see that there is a tab called Dropbox. Everything that you submit for a grade will go into Dropbox, absolutely everything. This is where I do the grading. So you may need to make sure that everything's going up into Dropbox on the required due date. If it's late, you will get a deduction for turning in work late. I usually give you a couple of days to turn work in late and then you'll just get a zero on the project. So it's, it's important that you keep those deadlines um, in your head or you read them on D2L and that you know when things are due. Also, grades are here. I do try and post grades as fast as I can. Um, I generally try and grade the day after an assignment is due. It might take me about 48 hours to get everything graded, but I try and stay on top of it. So, uh, you know, give me 24 to 48 hours and then check your grade. Make sure it makes sense to you and that you understand why you got the grade you got. If you don't, feel free to send me an email. There's also a quiz section here. This is where we will be taking our final exam, which is going to be in the sixth week of the course. That exam is going to be based on lectures, uh, video lectures, readings, and other class materials. I will give you a study guide that's pretty detailed, so don't panic, um, that where you can actually, you know, kind of look things up and make sure that you're really comfortable with everything that's going to be on the exam. 
but it is a timed exam. So what will happen is I'll give you about 36 hours to complete it. I'll open it up. Students can go and log in and then they'll have an hour to complete the exam once they're logged in. Of course, it's open book, but I really recommend that students do really good detailed cheat sheets for themselves. Um, it just makes the, it much easier for them to navigate all the questions in the hour allowed. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the home page here. So we looked at weekly instructions here already, and we know there's gonna be news posted in the news section. There's also a handouts for weekly lessons. So sometimes, for example, uh, certain projects will have uh, like a PDF file or an Illustrator file that you can use for layout, or there might be some reading material that I post in here. So check this out occasionally. If you're confused about where something that you're supposed to download is, it's probably in this handouts for weekly lessons. And then there's my syllabus. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on the syllabus. Contact info and office hours. My office hours are gonna be basically in the morning, so I'll be checking uh, into D2L around 8 a.m. and then I'll check um, you know really frequently for the first two or three hours of the day and then I'll check again kind of in the later afternoon. So I'll try and, and be in contact with you pretty quickly Monday through Thursday. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday I still will be checking but I'll be a little bit slower to respond so don't panic if you don't hear from me within a few hours on those days. And there are a couple of days that I'm in tra uh, traveling and I won't have access to the internet, I will post on those days so that you know I'm kind of out of internet for a while and then I'll just get back to you as quickly as I can. If, Like I said, if you need to contact me, email me through the D2L site. And the other thing I'm gonna try and do is have the Tuesday night meeting. So we're starting with our first meeting tonight. They are not required, they, they say mandatory um, in the syllabus, but they're actually a good time for me to connect with students who need extra help with the software, extra help getting the assignments done. So feel free to come. It's a great time for you to kind of connect with me one-on-one. -on -one. And if you can't come, don't worry about it. There's other ways that we can connect and I can help you, definitely through email, for example. Uh, if you need extra time, then let's discuss that because I, I am available to come in and let students work. We'll just have to kind of figure out some days to do that. Uh, this this um, course really works well with students who have a computer at home and are able to do the work on their own computers. Or um, it is possible also to do cut and paste methods where you basically cut your graphic designs into layouts and then photograph and upload those. So that's possible as well. But the most successful students generally have computers and they're slightly um, familiar or able to kind of navigate uh, uh, some sort of design software. That could be Adobe Elements or Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator. I do have some tutorials for you. Uh, and if you're confused, the Tuesday night meeting times are really a good time for us to, to try and problem solve. Let's go into mandatory class meetings. We have specific meeting days, but I will make myself available on most Tuesday nights. So if you email me and wanna catch up or meet with me on a Tuesday night, um, just let me know and I can come out to campus and open the lab and let students work for a few hours and get, give you some one-on-one -on -one help. I'll be kind of posting about that and uh, we can be talking about what's needed and, and if some students need some extra time with me. Uh, oh, sorry, there's a, little, there's, there's a little confusion. The class will be in the A303 lab, which is in the art building. The class uh, description and objectives are here, so you can read through that. And here's the student learning outcomes, which kind of tells you what you're expected to know at the end of the summer session. So hopefully you guys will feel very comfortable with most of this by the time the course is finished. Then we have projects. Uh, we have you know, writing assignments, we have projects, we have readings, we have critiques, and we have one at least one exam. So there's kind of a variety of stuff going on. You should have a sketchbook and you should sketch for every project and you'll be uploading some of those sketches to the discussion forum for peer review. So keep that sketchbook, learn to kind of sketch as you think. Uh, I, you know, it's really helpful if you have something that you can jot down ideas with you at all times, um, kind of inspires you. You'll also be kind of turning in some samples that you look at, uh, things that uh, for example, 
it, when we do the logo project, you'll, you'll collect good examples of logos and you'll share those with me so that I kind of know what you think is a good logo. And so I, I think it's really important as a new design student to, to look and get excited about designs that, for whatever reason, kind of spark um, your creativity. Textbook, there is a textbook. It's called Graphic Design Solutions by Robin Landa. I do have a PDF version of that textbook. So I will be giving that to students on our first meeting on Tuesday, 531. And I have a PDF in handouts for weekly lessons that you can download. Or if you want, you can purchase this textbook through Amazon. It's an older edition. Um, I'm rec going to recommend the fourth or fifth edition so that it's a little bit cheaper for you. But if you want to get the newer edition of this textbook, that's, t that's completely fine. It's a little bit more modern, a little bit more contemporary. Um, but like I said, it's quite expensive. The newest version I think is over $100. So if you buy a used or an older version, it's a little less money. And you can, if you want, use the PDF throughout the semester. Many students do. The other thing you'll need for this class are uh, pens for drawing. We have one uh, project where you're going to be sketching with black pens. You'll need a sketchbook, like I mentioned before. You'll probably need a ruler, some scissors, a glue stick for our very first collage project, although some students choose to do digital collages for that one, and that's okay. You might need a trace paper, although I'll give you some at our first course meeting if, if um, you need it and then a white plastic eraser, a kneaded eraser for your sketching. Those are things that I highly recommend. And then for students that really don't know a lot about design software, I'm really uh, strongly encouraging you to get a subscription to lynda.com, L-Y-N-D-A.com. This is a wonderful database that I myself use frequently. It has all of the softwares imaginable in there with lots of tutorials. And so it's a great place for you to keep current, to keep up to speed with software. And then I also have a, um, some documentaries that I show you. All of these are, 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 not all of them, but a lot of them are available on this lynda.com database. Grading, so there's lots of different things that you're graded on. This may change slightly, but for example, uh, there's the smaller assignments that are about 5%, and then there's, um, bigger assignments that range from 10 to 15 percent, your final quiz, and then I have this thing called textbook questions. Um, and the textbook questions are questions that you answer from your reading and then you upload them to a section in the Dropbox. So those are due on a weekly basis. You'll have probably two or three chapters that you're going to have to get through a week and then you'll answer the questions and upload those. Uh, it's, it's not, you know, it's not a lot of your grade if you miss one of them, but if you don't turn in any of them or if you miss most of them, it becomes pretty significant. So you do want to be doing your reading and uploading those textbook questions. It's about 15% of your grade. And how are you graded? Um, you know, design is somewhat subjective, so it is somewhat difficult to put a grade on that, but I have been teaching it for many years and so I have very good rubrics that I, um, where I really look at the project requirements. So it's not so much I'm teaching you how to be a great designer, I'm teaching you the process of design and following that process is usually what you're graded on. So if you do the sketching, the correct number of sketches, if you write up um, your synopsis, if you turn in your roughs, if you are turning in design solutions that solve specific problems, and this makes sense in terms of uh, the problem that you have been assigned to solve, then that's going to be part of the grade. Design is always a problem-solving activity. So there are ways that I, can, I feel I can fairly grade design assignments. But just look at this. Um, you need to pay attention to detail. Your presentation is important. Uh, uniqueness of solution, you know, you really need to come up with your own solution, not just copy a design that you see online. And then appropriateness of solution to project instructions or project brief. And lastly, following instructions accurately and meeting deadlines. Those are, are what you'll be graded on for your projects. 
Okay, um, then there's some critique basics that I give you. So as you look at other students' work, this can be a good thing to look at and just, you know, get, um, get familiar with the language of design and that will help you comment on other students' work and also talk about your own work articulately. So you'll be able to describe what you're doing much more efficiently if you, if you kind of think about design in terms of the correct language and so some of the things that you'll uh, be really encouraged to do is just describe what you see and using design language like negative positive um, line shape color other ways that you can give people feedback is to tell them what it reminds you of what it makes you think of um, you can be honest with them and tell them if you see the problem being solved or you know, sometimes students do these amazing creative designs, but it's not really addressing the problem. So that would be a good thing for you to comment on in the critique session. So I really encourage you to be honest. I encourage you to be positive, but honest. And uh, really, um, as a student, I think the best thing you can get is good feedback and good suggestions on your work. So that's kind of useful for you to kind of go and check out uh, periodically. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the home page. Um, there's a section here on software called lynda.com and software help um, that you can get some help on also if you need it. Um, I, for software help, basically I kind of just gave you some links to some online tutorials. You'll notice as you start Googling things um, that there's tons of resources uh, that you can access uh, for software. So for example, if you're working with Photoshop and you want to know how layers work, you Google Photoshop layers and you'll get like 20 or 30 videos that describe Photoshop layers. So it, it is a lot easier these days to get that software help. And that is um, one of the challenges of this course is it's not a software course, it's a design course. So we're really kind of thinking of ourselves as designers, we're talking in terms of design. And my basic rule is I don't care how you create it as long as it solves the problem and it looks great and you have good presentation and you follow all the requirements. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. I don't think I've left anything out. Look for my first news post. I look, I'm really excited to see what you guys come up with. It's always really fun in the summer. And uh, let me know if you have um, specific questions and hopefully when we meet at our in-person meeting, I can answer more questions.